Hello everyone here at OS Reviews. In this throwback episode, we'll be revisiting the Motorola Karma QA1, a very interesting name for a text messaging centric feature phone that was released in 2009. So it seems like recently we've been checking out quite a few 2009 handsets in our throwback series produced by Motorola, but those are all Android-based smartphones, such as the Motorola Spice over here, or it's or if it's the Motorola Charm that we revisited last year. So I wanted to kind of give a quick uh, contrast to that, looking at a phone from the manufacturer of the same time, but a non-smartphone OS. So the Karma was released on AT&T here in the United States, among other carriers globally, and it was a feature phone, so it does not use Android, it doesn't have Wi-Fi built in, but it does support 3G bands for AT&T. It also does have stereo Bluetooth, which allows you to connect to wireless headsets for listening to music, and it also has a full HTML browser, which supports desktop versions of sites, and at the time, Flash, so it was actually pretty capable for a non-smart device. What's also interesting about this phone is really the construction quality. I was taking it back when I first put it back in my hands just because it feels extremely, extremely solid. In fact, I would say it's better built than many of Motorola's more premium Android offerings at the time because we have a solid aluminum chassis on the side that uh, fits right on in with any 2018 flagship when it comes to build. And there's these uh, chamfered edges, which are super shiny. And the entire front here is actually made out of tempered glass, not plastic. So the entire weight as well as the feeling in the hand is just so much more refined than you'd expect coming from a feature phone. The resolution is 320 by 240, which is pretty low by today's standards again, but uh, it was fine again for the time. There's also a five-way navigation toggle, there's a hotkeys, talk and end keys that doubles as a power switch, and an email key as well as a clear key. Sliding up, we have access to a spring-assisted four-way QWERTY keyboard, and this is another one of Motorola's better keyboards. Of course, this is not a company that's as well-renowned as BlackBerry is for producing excellent thumb keyboards, but this is actually really good. The keys themselves are well-raised above the surface of the unit, they're individualized, and they have an extreme tactility to them, so as you're pressing down, you can hear the click, it just feels very satisfying and it just feels like a very comfortable layout to use, especially since the keys themselves have a good distance between them. Comparing this with the Motorola Spice that we recently also did a throwback review on, you can see how the keys are much more individualized. On the edge of the Karma, there's access to a multifunction key that you can tap to program to go into any specific app, which is also very cool. And the top gives you a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the other side, there's a dedicated volume rocker. And on the back, you also find access to a 2.0 pixel camera with no LED flash. There's also no self-portrait mirror, which was kind of a popular feature back then since people didn't have selfie or front-facing cameras. So the hardware is very solid, and the keyboard, to be honest, kind of reminds me of the Sharp Kin. So if you guys remember, the Kin 1 and the Kin 2 were two disastrous projects by Microsoft that we also revisited in a video from last year. So you guys can search that up. If you don't remember, it ran on this very interesting smartphone feature phone OS that was before we saw Windows Phone OS. So that's kind of an interesting device. When it comes to the UI and software, that's where the Motorola Karma QA1 is a lot more boring to these other Android counterparts with Moto Blur on top of Android OS. And that's because it simply doesn't offer too much flexibility uh, or you know too much advanced features beyond giving you text messaging services. Uh, so things like emailing, things like uh, social media, you can access Twitter and Facebook on here, but it uses your data connectivity. So there's no Wi-Fi hotspot features. Uh, with that being said, if you are, again, constantly checking you know, social media, it does have, again, this excellent keyboard that it definitely isn't capable of installing third-party games and apps, uh, which is what differentiates it from a true smartphone. And also, it doesn't have a touchscreen display. And booting this thing up again, it seems like it is carrier lock, so we probably have to insert a SIM card just to get it working uh, and bypass this lock screen, which is pretty common for feature phones back in the day, or dumb phones, so to speak, compared to smartphones where even if you don't have a SIM card, you can still use some of the other features. To Still, if you are curious, what this phone did allow you to do is give you a small widget bar on the bottom that's basically acting as shortcuts that you can cycle through to access things such as uh, very quickly uh, accessing your emails or going to social media. So it's displayed as a quick kind of bar such as this where you can go back and forth between left and right to go through the features. And that was basically it. Other phones that try to do what the Karma did would include the Motorola Evoke, which was another phone that has a sliding form factor that we did a throwback review on 
again about two years ago, but it has only a T9 layout where it slides up and reveals a dialing pad. This phone is another device that's basically a feature phone, but it has a touchscreen and uh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it doesn't have an app store, but it also has a very good construction quality that reminds us more of a kind of a luxury device or a designer phone because it's made out of aluminum and glass, just like on this device, except this one has a full QWERTY keyboard and it doesn't have that touchscreen. And if you are curious, this is basically what the interface looked like at the time. We had just a wallpaper and again a row of apps for things like Facebook, composing an email, calling someone, and here's what the main menu interface looks like if you want to go into this grid of icons for playing back music, for instance, or browsing the web. Other social networking apps also included MySpace, which of course not many people use today, but it does make sense on a keyboard phone with an excellent QWERTY layout that's also backlit. So that's more or less it as far as our revisited throwback look at the Motorola Karma QA1. And again, this is a phone that's primarily interesting because of the construction quality, which is so premium on a otherwise very budget-oriented multimedia phone. I didn't expect that from Motorola, when many of their Android phones here are made entirely out of plastic. So it seems a little bit strange that they would pay so much attention on a device like this, along with the Evoke. And it was also a time where Motorola were being a lot more adventurous and experimental with their phones. They released a lot of different devices, whether it was feature phones like this or smartphones, and they tried to appeal to younger audiences uh, as well as uh, slightly older audiences with phones like the Atrix, which were more powerful. And today, they are owned, at least the mobile division, by Lenovo, which is a Chinese company. So it's uh, kind of another sad tale in the mobile space from another previous giant, just like we saw with HTC and to some extent Sony in our past throwback videos. And I hate to always kind of do these almost sad melodramatic lookbacks where we see these once innovative giants now kind of not quite as prominent in the mobile space, but we can also learn from, I guess, what went wrong, what went right, and we always want to look forward to, to seeing whether these companies can come back and produce more interesting products down the road, or at least for other companies to heed the mistakes that these companies perhaps made and to try and avoid them. So you can check out more details about this phone in the description box below, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Motorola Karma QA1.